Okay, so this is an extra that I have made it here. And as you can see, this is an energy diagram. I'm going to even blow it up, something that is shown, shown up here. This is an energy diagram that S orbital forms sigma and sigma star. P orbital forms sort of the symmetric pi and anti-pi bonding and much deeper sigma and the sigma star. Okay? This is a, I like this diagram because it's very symmetric. And this is a case where your separation between S and the P are quite apart. And this is a case when you're dealing with a much more heavier atom. So this is a case for molecular orbital, oxygen, fluorine, which is higher Z numbers. The separation is big. So this combination, if I, if I draw the P orbital using my three fingers, this is a way, right? They are orthogonal to X, Y, Z. If I bring them together, they form sigma bonding. This full pi bonding, that's a pi bond. That's, a, that's a what pi and sigma you can see if you do not have any distortion from the S bond interference. So therefore, once you form this one sigma always, and then the two pi bonding, this is a, their anti-bonding that compensates the energy drop by energy increase for the combination of two linear combination of those two. Whereas this one, this one is uh, molecular orbital for something lighter, car lighter one. Okay, so this one is the one that you you see this. What's supposed to be here is flipped down to here, right? And that's the one that when you have a lighter atom, smaller z, and these are not so far from each other. There are secondary interaction to pull this one down to, to break the symmetry. Okay? It's not, I, 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 so this is, they have to provide it to you in the exam. This is a frequent problem, but they usually give that, this diagram, you gotta choose which one to use. And then the one that my favorite one is this. Let's look at the oxygen, okay? Oxygen is a heavier one, so this is a case that I, I am going to use this one. And oxygen to me is a, Z is eight, but what matters is six electrons, so therefore O2, MO, we are dealing with 12 electrons, right? So 12 electron, I am doing the following. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So, okay, so it looks, Interesting, and then what you see is in the anti-bonding, there are two unpaired electrons located up there. Okay? So that, that gives us some interesting property. And because when, do you see the, essentially, do you, is this is a paramagnetic or a diamagnetic? The answer here is an oxygen is known as paramagnetic. And I will show you the video that you can, you can remember. And the, the paramagnetic is responsible by these this unpaired electrons. What about the nitrogen? Nitrogen Z is seven, but one matter is five electron in the valence shell. So 10 electron for N2, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So overall, I don't have any unpaired, uh, unpaired electron. Everything is paired. So this one is a dynamic. Okay. And uh, you, can, you can think about the bond order too. Okay. So if you draw the uh, molecular, the Lewis structures, you probably draw this way. Okay. Double bond. Looks good, right? Looks fine, but this is misleading. So that's why the you know the Lewis didn't get Nobel Prize, although he used it a lot. He's a he's a American chemist who didn't get the Nobel Prize. I think that he complained that for his entire life. Uh, uh, is a this is a, one of the reasons that Lewis structure was uh, uh, is not correct because they don't. Everything paired up give you an illusion or a wrong impression that this must be a diamagnetic. But it is not. 
and the molecular orbital theory was uh, really the correct explanation for this uh, paranegative property. Nitrogen is a triple bond. So this is a one, and nitrogen is is actually a loose structure. Is correct. Okay. So we we call so therefore the oxygen as a what we call chemically speaking a radical. So let me show you the, the videos. So I think I showed the video before though. This person was trying to condense the liquid oxygen here. Okay? So if liquid oxygen can be condensed from liquid nitrogen. So this is a liquid oxygen, and this is a straight up from the bottles. It's a liquid, this is liquid nitrogen. What you see here is a liquid nitrogen. This is a big magnet. This is going through it. Diameter. Okay. So let's see what happens when he pour this one, which is a liquid oxygen. This is a diameter because the nitrogen is a diameter. So now he's pouring the liquid oxygen. What do you see? They stop, right? So there are little magnets that are trying to align. So this is a liquid oxygen that located in B2 magnet. So this is an example of paramagnetic. And uh, the molecular orbital theory nicely explained it. Something that, let, let, I guess, less exciting. <laughs> this is a paramagnetic because of the molecular orbital theory. And 